Hello, and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. Yes, we're still working on this book. Yes, we're getting closer to the end. Without further ado, another installment of my bedtime book of two-minute stories, edited by Rosemary Garland, illustrated by Tony Escott and Sally Wellman. Today's stories are Elizabeth's Magic Rocking Horse by Margaret Connor, and New Dungarees for Timothy by Rosemary Garland. I remember both of these quite well. Not sure why on Timothy, but come on. Elizabeth's Magic Rocking Horse. Sounds like fun. I think you guys have kind of figured out a little bit what kind of kid I was, at least in terms of my reading material. She liked animals. Elizabeth had a magic rocking horse. By sitting on its back and rocking it to and fro, she could make it change into any kind of horse she wished, such as a seahorse or a cloud horse. Then they would go on wonderful adventures down through the sea or up among the clouds. One morning she said, I think I'll change you into a seahorse today. So she climbed up onto the magic rocking horse and started to rock him to and fro. To and fro, down in the sea we go, she sang as she rocked. And soon they were sinking through the waves, right to the sandy bottom of the sea. Hello, called a mermaid. Come and play with me. Elizabeth tied her horse to an old anchor with a long piece of seaweed and went off to play with the mermaid. As they passed the shell of a hermit crab, the mermaid called, Coming out to play. But the hermit crab didn't answer. He's so shy, he never speaks to anyone, said the mermaid. So of course he hasn't any friends. How can you make friends if you never speak to anyone at all? Elizabeth didn't have time to answer because some fish called skates came along just then. They weren't shy. Coming skating with us? They cried. We're just off to find a nice big iceberg. Silly things. They won't find one round here, laughed the mermaid. The water's much too warm. Oh, here comes my dog, she said. How can you have a dog down here in the sea? Cried Elizabeth with surprise. Then she saw it was a dogfish. You have dog animals on land, and we have dogfish in the sea, laughed the mermaid. But suddenly she looked worried. Her pearl necklace had come undone. The clasp needs tightening, she said. Let's find a lobster to do it for me. They soon found a lobster who pinched the clasp tighter for her. That's better, smiled the mermaid. I mustn't lose these pearls because they're real. Some oyster friends of mine made them especially for me. It took them a very long time. I'm glad then that you haven't lost it, said Elizabeth politely. Then she said, I ought to be going home. Would you like some periwinkles to take home with you? Asked the mermaid. Yes, please, I like periwinkles, said Elizabeth. She was surprised when the mermaid gave her a handful of winkles. These are not flowers, she cried. Periwinkles are blue flowers. They are also sea snails, said the mermaid. You call them winkles, which is only short for periwinkle. Elizabeth thanked her for the periwinkles and went to untie her seahorse. Then up, up through the waves they rose. Oh dear, she cried as they came up out of the sea. I've dropped my winkles. Stop nodding your head, she cried to the seahorse as she tried to peer down into the water to look for them. But it was Elizabeth who was nodding her head, for she had fallen asleep on her magic rocking horse. We'll have another adventure tomorrow, she told him, climbing down. We've found out lots of new things today, haven't we? Interesting, and the art is very colorful and very well done. I like the style of the Easter girl. Also, please excuse our voices. They may be a little bit raspy. Mine especially. I did a lot of cleaning recently. Also, something I'd like to point out with this, if you ever get a copy of this book and you think the lobster's the wrong color, no, lobsters are naturally blue. They turn red when they get cooked. Or if you see them in the tanks at restaurants. restaurants. But naturally, in their natural environment, they are a blue color. So that lobster is the correct color. Nice little touch there. Because most people would go, the lobster's the wrong color. It should be red. Also, I'd like to point out that a seahorse is not related to horses. So she can make it turn into anything with the word horse in its name, I'm guessing. <laughs> so what did you think of the story? Fun, cute. It had horses. Come on. <laughs> I really like the patterning they used for the background to give the water effect. Lots of nice little detail. The mermaid. She's all green and human. I like the fact that they used the hair to um, block certain parts of the body. They didn't go the seashell route. 
So the only thing she's wearing besides her hair is the pearls. Ooh, is that a conchal? Conch shell. Conch shell, yeah. I think they may have meant it to be the shell for the hermit crab because if you look at the line here along the shell, that almost looks slightly flesh tone. Hmm. Though shells, many shells have kind of a pinky interior. Would you like to continue? Mm-hmm. And now, new dungarees for Timothy. Timothy's mother bought him a lovely new pair of dungarees. They went to the shops together to choose them. Timothy chose a red pair, and he liked them so much that when he tried them on in the shop, he didn't want to take them off again. Would you like to keep them on to go home in? asked the sales lady. Yes, please, said Timothy, and the lady let him walk out of the shop wearing his lovely new dungarees. They are to wear over your other things to keep your clothes clean while you play in the garden, explained Mother. When they got home, Timothy went straight out into the garden. He was soon having fun in his sand pit and completely forgot he was wearing his new dungarees until he heard Jane from next door. She was peeping over the fence. Oh, Timothy, you've got new trousers on, said Jane. Aren't they lovely? Timothy ran over to Jane. I've got something new too, said Jane. If you peep over the fence, you will see it. Timothy went to his special place in the fence where he always climbed up and looked over into Jane's garden. There on Jane's lawn was a lovely yellow scooter. Oh, Jane, you are lucky, said Timothy. May I ride it? Yes, said Jane. Ask your mother if you can come over this afternoon. Timothy jumped down very quickly, but as he jumped, he caught his new dungarees on a splinter of wood and tore them. One minute he was excited about Jane's scooter, and the next minute he was crying about his new dungarees. What would mother say? He ran into the kitchen. Mother, look what I've done to my new dungarees. Oh dear, said mother, that is a big tear. The mother was very quiet for a minute. Are you cross? asked Timothy. No, I'm not very cross, said mother. That's what dungarees are for, to save your other clothes. But I'm thinking of a way to mend them so that no one will know. Now I've thought of a way. Timothy took them off. Aren't you really and truly cross? asked Timothy. No, said mother. Even big grown-up men tear their dungarees when they are very busy. Timothy watched mother go to her sewing basket. She brought out a piece of green material and a piece of yellow material. Now, what picture would you like me to patch this big tear with? she asked. Timothy thought for a long time. Then he said, an airplane. So mother cut out the yellow material for the body of the airplane. And then she cut out the green material for the wings and the tail. Then she sewed the picture over the tear and no one could see that there had been a tear at all. And that afternoon, when Timothy went round to Jane's house to have a ride on her scooter, Jane said, I didn't notice that lovely airplane on your dungarees this morning. And Timothy didn't tell her about the tear. That was a big secret between him and his mother, wasn't it? Cute. Mm-hmm. And of course, we're back to the two-color artist. I'd also like to point out that I'm guessing dungarees is the more European version of overalls. Just to give people a clearer picture of what we're talking about here. <laughs> Also, I'd like to remind everyone that though the ink the artist is using this time is green, Timothy's dungarees are red. Oh, yeah. And the only part of the dungarees that are green is the wings and the tail of the airplane, which, to be shown in contrast to the green dungarees, is in white. Yeah, and it's supposed to be two colors, you just said, I believe. Yes, because yellow material for the body of the plane and green material for the wings and tail. But it's shown as a solid color in the illustration. And the kids are very well rendered. And the sandbox is fun. There's a little truck in it. And he's got a little sand kind of castle thing going on. And you can see Jane and her new scooter. That scooter looks like fun. Oh, she has a swing in the background, too. Back when you could still put swings in trees and have it be considered safe. I helped set up a tire swing once. That was actually kind of fun. So, should we move on to the poem that I see on this page? Mm-hmm. Little Gosling. Mrs. Goosey, out one day, lost a gosling on the way. Oh dear, oh dear, Mrs. Goosey cried. Where has that gosling gone to hide? So in the bushes and by the stream, Mrs. Goosey looked for him. But little gosling was having fun, nimbling grass in the summer sun. The sun went behind a big black cloud 
and the little gosling called out loud, It wasn't a good idea to roam. Before it rains, I will go straight home. And all I can think of the entire time she was reading that poem, because of the name Gosling, was Daring Duck of Mystery, Champion of Ride, Swoops Out of the Shadows, Darkwing of the Night. I would join in, but I only watched like three episodes of Darkwing Duck ever, so. Somewhere some criminal, I think I like. And somewhere some villain scheme. screams. No, schemes. Schemes. Somewhere some villain schemes. Three, two, uh, oh well. Um, but his number's up. Uh, three, three, two, two one. one. Darkwing Wing Duck. Duck. When there's trouble, just call D.W. DW. Yeah, that part I know. I've sang it a lot around her. Yeah. But that's really cute. And there's, I'm guessing that's the missing Goslin. Gosling, not Goslin. Gos Gosling, sorry. I would think so, because the other three Goslings are shown in close proximity to the mother. Some of the flowers have faces. The gosling and the flower here are looking at each other. And the little gosling down at the bottom of the page by himself. The one looks like it has a face, but they're not on speaking terms, apparently. And just to give a more mental picture, we have this nice lovely picture at the top with the mother and the other gosling. And a bunch of cattails, which is a nice solid drawing at the top with the background and everything. And then you see the poem, and then at the very bottom is the other gosling. So, what do you think? Oh, pretty solid rhyme scheme. They only have one near rhyme. Stream and hem, that's a near rhyme. Everything else is an exact rhyme. Day away, cried, hide. Fun, sun, cloud, loud, roam, home. Hmm. But stream and hem is a little bit of a stretch. So, what did you think of the stories overall? Well, like I said, I re remember both. I enjoyed both. Obviously, Elizabeth wins over Timothy because Elizabeth has a magic rocking horse. Timothy has a piece of clothing. So this has been another two stories from my bedtime book of two-minute stories. Edited by Rosemary Garland. Illustrated by Tony Escott and Sally Wellman. Today's stories were Elizabeth's Magic Rocking Horse by Margaret Connor. And New Dungarees for Timothy by Rosemary Garland. So let's see, we're on page 90 now for Timothy. And the book ends on page 123. Mm. We're getting there. Thank you for listening. If you haven't picked up a copy of this book yet, I'm pretty sure it's still available on Amazon. Uh, it's been running about 50 cents, which is about what I got this book for as a kid, at least according to the inside cover. Also, if you haven't been following along obsessively with every pair of stories from this book there's a whole playlist you can get caught up in a couple hours also there's other books other playlists of books and there's more pop culture topics on the main section of the channel Lux gets to talk more during those also he draws pretty pictures I'm good at art <laughs> yes yes you are thank you I also perform just not in our chance I don't know, if you're going to do a tone like that, maybe we should have some Lux's dramatic readings of. You've suggested that for me often enough. All right, so I only mentioned Amazon. I didn't mention eBay. So you guys have heard this feel before, but I'm going to throw the disclaimer here so that we're all on the up and up. Amazon and Ebates are not sponsors of or in any way affiliated with Ember's Reading Room or any content in the Lux Analysis channel. Thank you again for listening, and a special thanks to those of you who have been following along the entire book. And been commenting on every single video. Thank you.